A Glimpse at Soul is a very specific title as opposed to A Glimpse of Soul. For me, A Glimpse at starts to speak to the whole as opposed to the individual. This notion of collective experience. When you get a glimpse of something, it's a fragment, if you will, a small portion. But when you get a glimpse at, you get to see the whole thing, even just for a second. This work, although it is very personal, and it comes from me, it really does speak to the collective, the greater experience, the whole, if you will. So initially I was asked a question, and the question was, what do you think about today's climate? So I started to think about how I was feeling and how I could express that um, with an image. And so with this piece, the first, Ascension One, I like to ask how many of us have had a bad day? And this kind of starts to get at this idea that life can be long and sometimes have its difficult patches. And as I get older and start to really see and understand how the world works, um, not for what I thought it might be, but for what it actually is, um, there's a little bit of a stunning there. So that's where this kind of look comes from, like, whoa, this is how the world actually works. And uh, for me, the initial response is almost to want to close off. And so that's why the, the flesh, the man, his fingers are closed. Um, you know, let me take a step back from social media, let me disengage, that kind of response. But something on the inside, that abstraction within us all, the unexplainable, the serendipity, that little spark on the inside says, you know what, you have to keep open and look above and try to find something that will help you move forward so that I can get the best out of this experience. So in a way this, for me, it's a personal answer response to a type of universal experience, this human experience. So as we make our way over here to Ascension 2, this starts to become a little bit more specific about me being a black man here in America and my experience in this current time. I don myself with a cape, and for me it's representative of my painting abilities, almost like a superpower, if you will. Be it that it comes with a type of responsibility for sure. And on one hand, I'm to some degree chained. And for me, the chains are representative of stereotypes, if you will. Are you a good basketball player? What's your favorite rap music? All I have to do is put on a hoodie, sweatpants, and walk into any retail store. And all of those stereotypes, negative connotations, are chained to me whether I prescribe to them or not. And on the other hand, I hold a rose, beautiful, full of life. And for me, it's representative of black culture, black American culture, beautiful, full of life. But here at the bottom, the petals fall and start to collect and pool like blood, representing the fallen, slain, martyred, murdered, taken, taken, boys and girls, men and women. Emmett Till, Rodney King, Martin Luther King, and George Floyd. There's this really long history. And in response, again, the spirit man, depicted in blue, drops to a knee, looks above, points above, and calls upon something greater for assistance for guidance, to help me get through this time and space in a way that I'm able to still thrive and be successful.
Rose came to me in a vision. This type of bold defiance is really the best way that I can describe it. Almost this bursting forward with life. I love this metaphor of the rose, being this thing that is beautiful, desired and sought after, but also born in the mud. There's a saying, the rose that came from the concrete, defying all odds, bursting forward. But then also roses are covered in thorns. This beautiful, delicate thing has this built-in defense mechanism, if you will. And in a lot of ways, I feel like that's pretty representative of human life. A lot of us have this wonderful story to tell, but it's filled with dirt and thorns and rainy days and yet we still seem to prevail. This is Grown Woman, and I titled her Grown Woman, of course, because of the rose and all of the associations with flowers and growing. But specifically, when I hear the title Grown Woman, I'm thinking of something that you are intentional with, something that takes time. The title almost implies this long narrative of history of struggles, challenges, overcoming, beautiful moments, sad moments, all of those things wrapped up in this notion of time, something that's grown over time. So with TikTok, I was really thinking about influence. I chose to put the roses in the eyes because our eyes are a way in which we absorb the world. Again, going back to this notion of watering oneself, pouring into oneself, absorbing information. I thought that was an interesting concept to start to make these decisions about one's life, especially grown-up concepts, as a child. and still shining. I absolutely love this piece. The figure is surrounded in this dark, atmospheric type of space, and it's almost like, is he the space? Is he within the space? And it's not really quite clear. But what you do know is that there's almost an entire universe inside of him. So it's almost like regardless of the time and the space and the circumstances, uh, whatever is inside of him, he is still shining. Again, thinking about the rose, the mind, and what it is we're taking into ourselves, absorbing, and then what type of fruit are we pouring out, blossoming into the world. Shielding oneself can take place in many forms, and for many reasons. For how long should one remain on guard, waiting, anticipating? These shielded pieces act as a type of metaphor for being guarded and protecting oneself from the world in all its different forms and all its different hurts. Life can throw all kinds of curveballs at you, and in some aspects, you have to put in mechanisms to keep yourself safe, both mentally, spiritually, physically, and emotionally. And so for me, using this kind of armor, but then putting the figure directly on it, speaks to that kind of idea and that concept. Not hardening in the sense of being this kind of aggressive warrior, but a type of protection to ensure that you can navigate the spaces of life in a very successful way. So again, in this particular instance, the armor, the breastplate, has the figure directly in front of it. He's wearing it almost like a crown. And this kind of speaks to the mind as a very sensitive organ that we all have that needs to be guarded and protected. Lady Liberty, Liberated Lady. I titled her that because when I look at her, she reminds me of the Statue of Liberty, the way the rose sits at the top of her head, almost like 
the crown on the Statue of Liberty. For me, this piece starts to speak to being within this system, being a part of the system, but then also staking claim to it, a bit of ownership, a bit of self-liberation, if you will. I'm going to do what it is I have to do to make sure that I get the things out of life that I want. I love that notion of just being powerfully you and really standing in it. <laughs>